What do you make of the, uh, for a time, for most of the time, the NKVD was about the head of uh, NKVD, uh, Lavrenti Pavlovich Beria? No, oh, Beria, yeah. I have, a, I have a, a death warrant signed by him hanging in my kitchen that I uh, um, acquired. Um, he was one of the most evil people who ever lived. Uh, the thing that Americans don't appreciate is the, how clever some of this sadism is. So there was one uh, actress, I think he took her back to his, to his house and he asked her to, he tried to get her to sleep with him. And he promised her that if she did, her father and either her husband or her grandfather, or which one it was, is going to be released from jail. Well, they were already dead at that point. He had them executed. Um, they're still finding the bodies of the women he murdered uh, in the grounds of his dacha. It's an embassy now. And the thing is Stalin knew, because at one point Stalin, there's a picture of Stalin's daughter in his lap, you know, and she was at his house one day and Stalin calls up, he goes, get out of there immediately. So he, like a good bureaucrat, he had a li he kept a list of all of his sexual partners. It's still uh, um, sealed, uh, but both him and his bodyguard had this list. So just to clarify, yeah, he headed the operation that did this whole giant mechanism of forced confessions. Yes, he was part of expanding the gulag, so he wasn't the head of the gulags, but he was part of this giant. And machine. his famous quote was, "Show me the man, and I'll show you the crime." Yeah, but on top of that, what you're describing is he was also related or not was also just a mass rapist. Yes, and there's some dispute about whether he went after kids with his rapes, but there's plenty of adult women that were uh, uh, targets for this. There was also another little joke about him, about how Stalin is looking for his pipe and he can't find it, and he calls Beria, and he's like, okay, I can't find this pipe. And then in the afternoon, he calls Beria again. He's like, oh, I found the pipe. He goes, but, but Comrade Stalin, we've got four people to confess to steal it already. <laughs> so you have to laugh, but then you yeah. think about the nature of, of how it operates. In, well, in it, it also the fact that this kind of person was allowed to run I mean, I, I, I suppose um, it's all different kinds of evil and rape was just a part of the story. His own personal um, willingness to uh, oversee torture and commit torture himself and rape. But it's also what happens when you're in a country where it has no rights of any kind. And by the way, I should mention that people should get your book and audio, when is your audiobook coming out? It's in a couple of weeks, so okay. it'll be out shortly, yeah. Uh, you gave me the great honor of uh, voicing this man. That's for the promo. Yeah, uh, For the promo. Yeah, the video. Excellent, I appreciate that. <clears throat> for a moment, I actually, it was really difficult. Really? Yeah. It was just a sentence. I understand, I understand. Because uh, it takes you to that place. Oh yeah. Because he told her, scream if you want, doesn't matter. Yeah. And he was right. Like, that's the thing. He wasn't bluffing. She could scream her. She, you know, these women could scream their head off. No one's going to come help him. He would drive around Moscow at night in his limo looking for victims. But somehow me saying those words was tough. I'm sure. It was, uh, it was tough. <laughs> because this is where we came from. Do you know what I mean? This isn't just like some kind of uh, Tolkien villain. But it, it also was tough because I could see myself being somewhere in that machine somewhere. Like somehow that put me right there. Like I, I, it's, it's, any, like there, any cog in that machine is committing evil. Yes. That's the dark thing. Um, I think the, the, high, the, the higher you are to the top, the closer you are to the top, the more ability you have to stop it. But the less, the more freedom you have to stop it, I suppose. Uh, to a point, yeah. But like the little things. So Beria had the freedom to commit rape or not to. And so he cho chooses to sort of increase the amount of evil he's putting out into the world. But then you have to counterbalance that as, as dark as this calculus is after Stalin dies, like that week, they start making the gulag shrink. They start pulling back on the concentrate, the labor camps. So, I mean, so that is a big plus in his side. Like you start liberating, having this mass amnesty and freeing people from uh, work camps. That That's not minor thing. So it's crazy. Like, it's like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not St. Peter, right? I don't, I, I don't know. 
I, I'm not saying he's a good person, but it's kind of insane that someone can do things that everyone listening to this would regard as pure evil. And at the same time, this guy also, when the time came, saved tens of thousands of lives. So in some sense, Stalin is a kind of cancer that permeates all of yes. the, all, all oh, the yeah. Soviet minds. And once it's gone, you almost like wake up, wait a minute, what the fuck was I a part of? And, and Khrushchev in, it was a 56, when he gave his secret speech, uh, you know, behind closed doors. And he's just like, all this criticism of Stalin was true. This is complete on what Marxism, you know, he tried to salvage the system. This is not what Marxism is about. We can't have a personality cult. Uh, you know, Stalin killed all these top generals. And when Hitler turned to betray the pact and invaded, Stalin didn't believe his buddy Hitler was going to do this. And as a result of this, we lost a lot of territory and lives. This is not a military genius. This was Stalin being an idiot or an, a, a moron, whatever you, whatever term it want to be. So, you know, yeah, there, but the thing is, Khrushchev also was a butcher. You know, he had a lot of blood on his hands. You don't become, you know, the take Stalin's seat without having overlooked a lot of uh, murder and chaos. So it, 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 it's such a, um, that's why it's called, the subtitled books, A Tale of Good and Evil. There's so much malevolence to go around.